Welcome back to Beyond the Veil of Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. I'll be your astrologer for the month ahead. <laughs> Usually we do this on Sunday, so it's a little weird doing this on a Tuesday, but we, we got to get it in before uh, the beginning of June. If you guys have not already checked out my horoscopes for the 12 rising signs, make sure you check that out. It's somewhere on my playlist. Uh, I go through a lot of these for each and every one of the individual signs and much more. Uh, so it'll give you lots of insight as to how to personally plan your month ahead. But this is the general overview and it's got a lot more to it. Uh, just to give you guys an overview of what to be expecting for the month of June of 2023. Uh, we've got some interesting things that are setting up. We've got some interesting retrogrades, uh, a number of retrogrades that are going to be taking place uh, this month, especially in uh, later degrees and uh, much, much, much more. So intermittently throughout this video, you're gonna see somewhere off to the side, uh, a list of some of the uh, big themes for the month ahead as a reminder, um, and also the lunation. So I'm gonna take you guys day by day. If you work with an astrological planner, or if you have like a day planner or a weekly planner, a uh, great time to grab that so you can make notes of some of these aspects uh, that'll be taking place all month long. Um, and just a, re a reminder for you guys, I am going to be teaching a live webinar in the month of June. It's going to be June 11th um, at 12 p.m. Central Time. So that's going to be 10 p.m., excuse me, 10 a.m. on uh, Pacific Time and noon Central, 1 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast. Hello. Uh, so check out that. I'll post the link somewhere. It's all going to be about the Venus retrograde. And I'll touch on that a little bit in today's video. Um, if you guys stay tuned until Thursday, you're going to see that I'm going to have a uh, Venus entering Leo video um, as well, kind of giving you guys some insight as to what Venus is going to be going through in the midst of her um, potential retrograde period. We're going to talk more about while Venus is direct because the retrograde itself won't happen until the end of July. So it's still two months away. Uh, but I want to let you guys know that you're going to see the rumblings of the Venus retrograde taking place in June because we're going to see several aspects. So I'll get to that in a second. But um, if you happen to have uh, any personal planets in Leo, sun, moon, or rising, um, or if you have Venus in Leo, or if you are a Taurus or a Libra rising, it'll be especially important for you to know how this Venus retrograde is going to affect you, to be honest, because there's going to be so many aspects involving the nodes, and uh, the nodes are going to change signs. This is a Venus retrograde that's going to rock and rattle and roll for everyone, uh, but those fixed signs and the Venus rule charts are definitely going to feel it a little bit more. Um, if you guys are watching this at the end of May, I am offering $15 off for my June Venus retrograde webinar. Uh, so click the link if you guys want to sign up. We have a limited number of seats. I'm calling it the cruel subber. <laughs> ah, it's going to be a little wild. Um, all right, so let's get into the month ahead. As you guys can see, based off my list, uh, I've got a number of things to touch on. Probably one of the bigger transits for the month kicks off right on the first, and this is when we're going to see Jupiter and the North Node in conjunction to one another. Uh, somewhat unusual transit happens about every six or seven years. Um, the North Node talks about we're going where we're going for soul growth. Um, so I've said that it acts kind of like a megaphone, so it makes things louder. Um, ruled by Venus, right? Taurus is about money, values, personal pleasure, anything in regards to personal growth. Um, and uh, it's physical, it's an earth sign. So this can represent physical growth, financial growth, um, or just growth in a sense of creative self-expression. So when Jupiter and the North Node come together, Jupiter magnifies that. If you guys caught my uh, full moon and Sagittarius, Sagittarius video, you guys saw how I talked about the Jupiter North Node connection, how it was important, but it was a little bit of a blind spot. I touched, about, I touched on how it's important for you to be able to work with that full moon and really set intentions the whole first week of June when it comes to uh, wish fulfillment, uh, personal growth, financial growth, more creative or um, self-expressive you know, opportunities. Honestly, it's like a, it's a cosmic kiss from the cosmos. So everybody is going to get this somewhere in their chart. You gotta look at where Taurus is. Um, this is where you're gonna have a little bit of oomph and something is being seeded that's gonna be growing over the better part of the next six, seven years. Um, but definitely, I think we're going to see this be a pretty, pretty significant, you know, transit, not only because it's going to be expanding our future and our destiny, but also because it's going to be in a square to Pluto. So it feels like we must grow in the Taurus area of our life. Otherwise, there is something that 
will radically change, transform, and or kind of transition. Now, some of you guys with that Pluto square have realized that there is drama coming up, there is some kind of conflict coming up, there is some kind of ending coming up. For some, it's about death, release, and letting go. Um, and where there are endings, it's actually pushing Jupiter to be willing to um, you know, make lemonade, to see the bright side of life, and where there's new opportunities and areas for growth as a result of some of those endings. Um, particularly challenging for those of you guys with the fixed signs, okay? So the nodes affect everyone, but if you have any personal planets, uh, sun, moon, or rising, especially in the early degrees of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, uh, this is very potent when we see T-squares. Essentially, what's being set up is that there is something that shows up that creates conflict where you have to act. Um, when planets square the nodes, we see that we are put in a position of having to make a decision and based off of how we handle this decision, it will allow us to break free from the past and move further into the destiny of the North Node. Here's the kicker. Mars has recently been in a square. So you guys have probably noticed this last week or so that, you know, Mars square the nodes, more conflict, more challenges, we're kind of cutting, severing, or just seeing a whole lot of drama. So it's not your stereotypical Jupiter on the North Node, which would be very positive and abundant in itself, and it is, but it's being challenged from things that must end, exposing secrets, uh, manipulation, you know, power struggles and control, and also arguments or conflict or drama that kind of brings all of this up and it unearths all of it and it brings it to the surface. Ultimately, Jupiter and Taurus wants us to have more pleasure, it wants us to have more success, it wants us to have much more of an earthy experience. Um, so if you guys are kind of feeling the heat, you're gonna to continue to keep feeling that, you know, off and on intermittently throughout June, um, because we are gonna see other planets that are gonna start coming into squares with the nodes like Venus. We're gonna see Venus also kind of square off with Jupiter and Uranus, following in the same territory which Mars has kind of gone through. And I jokingly said there was gonna be conflicts and fights and bruises and Venus was going to have to backtrack over the summer to kind of make up for some of that stuff. So watch for that. Um, but still very potent period of time to be manifesting, you know, praying, uh, connecting with Jupiter, reciting mantras, um, and really pushing yourself to grow on a very, on a very physical level. Now, on the fourth of the month, we're going to see that Mercury will come into conjunction with Uranus and Taurus. Uh, this is kind of the event that I personally have been waiting for, knowing that this last month or so we had a Mercury retrograde that was in Taurus. So when Mercury's retrograde, information is concealed. We have to go back and find the details, find the missing emails, uh, touch back on conversations that we've had. So you guys wanna be thinking about some of the conflict, miscommunications, breakdowns, delays, challenges that have been happening since mid-April. That's right, when we were getting into the shadow. Really potent for uh, you know Taurus placement. So if it's your natal sun, moon, or rising, there has been some of these issues coming up with you personally. Um, but equally, it's been it's been affecting everybody. Everybody's got Taurus in in their chart. Um, Taurus can also be about resources and money. So there's no coincidence. The last two months, there's been some hot topics about some issues and crisis in the banking system. So when Mercury starts to come into conjunction with Uranus, he's coming out of the shadow. So we're, we're exiting the post shadow of the retrograde um, and it's gonna go off with a bang. So, you know, June the 4th, there's gonna be some unexpected, sudden ideas, conversations. Um, I'm assuming that the news is gonna be flooded with some shocking, surprising news about the banking financial system and also debt because this is happening at 20 degrees which deals with Scorpio. So it's about give and exchange, give and take. Some people may see some issues getting money off of exchanges, having money withdrawn, uh, moving money in between accounts, um, especially considering Venus is the dispositor of Taurus and we're watching Venus hit that crisis 29 degrees and make an opposition to Pluto. Now, Venus's ingress is going to be challenging. Um, we're going to see a duel between the North Node ruler and the South Node ruler. And when we see oppositions, it's relational. So it can relate to there being drama, fear, manipulation of the markets, of relationships, of investments, uh, because Venus is moving into a sign that deals with, you know, drama. Leo is about romance and creativity and self-expression. But Mars is there. So we're going to see Mars and Venus moving through Leo uh, for the better part of the next several months. 
um, which is definitely going to bring up a lot of uh, scandal. That's definitely something that we see a lot of with uh, Mars and Venus in Leo. So um, all of these planets are getting kicked up because they get challenged from Pluto, uh, where there can be some... Um, there can be almost like some um, situations in relationships where, you know, people are being given ultimatums. Um, that's, that's kind of what it feels like to me. Or in friendships, right? Or within society, some kind of you must do this or you must do that. Right now, we've been feeling the conflict. But as Venus comes in, we start to realize that the effects that that has on the financial system, that that has in relationships, um, and we can kind of start to see some things kind of break down and, and you know, erode. So... Venus at that critical point is picking up that there's about to be some kind of significant information when it comes to not just our finances, but um, our relationships and our domestic harmony. You know, Venus in Cancer is going to be about um, home and appreciation and home values and relationships with those who we live with and our relatives. And when Venus starts to oppose Pluto, Right along the time that Mercury and Uranus are conjuncting, you're going to hear a lot of people say, oh, I, you know, I, I think I want to move. I want to sell my place. I want to move out. I you know, want to go back home. I want to be you know, connecting with other people um, from my past. So we can, we can hear this theme that's going to start coming up about the past, family past, uh, ancestral kind of uh, traditions, relationships from the past. That's going to be a big theme that you're going to see coming up with the Venus retrograde as well. But watch with that Mercury-Uranus connection. There's going to be a day to brainstorm. You can have sudden you know, strokes of genius and amazing ideas. But there can also be shocking conversations revolving around the give and take when it comes to finances, what um, you're putting into your bank account, what benefits you're getting out of it, what interest rates you're getting out of it, how much money you're making on savings, what's coming out of your taxes, how that money is being spent. Um, so that's likely what we're going to be hearing a lot about. No coincidence that we're also reaching this peak moment here in the United States in regards to uh, the, the you know, debt ceiling and whether or not there's going to be a decision that's going to be made. Um, this is making an opposition uh, and has been making an opposition to the United States Pluto, who is still feeling the effects of the Pluto return. Um, Mercury comes out of shadow then on the 4th. And then we're going to see on the 5th, that Mars enters into, excuse me, Venus enters into Leo. So now we've got Mars and Venus in Leo, okay? And as soon as Venus enters into Leo, she is going to be here for four months long. Uh, she will go retrograde later in July, and she will be retrograding from 28 degrees to 12 degrees of Leo. Uh, more on that in my next video. Just know that because of the retrograde, that's going to be four months of having Venus in a certain part of the sky. Um, so if you happen to be a Leo sun, moon, or rising, it's going to be very significant for you. But equally, you guys want to take a look at um, where Leo is in your chart. If you happen to be another sun sign, you want to take a look at what houses Venus rules because that's somehow going to play into the flavor of the retrograde. Now, we had a retrograde like this back in 2015, so you might want to kind of put a mental note in that and uh, re refer back to what was playing out for you uh, in your life in regards to relationships or values or perhaps even your personal style that might be re-evaluated uh, later this summer. I personally like to see Mars and Venus in the same sign. It's very passionate. Um, it's very dynamic. There's lots of room for dating and relationships and having fun in the sign of Leo. Um, it's very warm, very charismatic, and you know Mars is in a fire sign, so it's going to be more active, and um, it's it's tapping into that masculine energy. While Venus moving into Leo is very um, very sensual, very warm, very flirty, very fun. Um, so I, I like the ingress in general. I like to see these two move side by side. You know, they would say in 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 traditional astrology when those two are coming together in the skies. We would see that wars would cease because everybody would be busy like having sex and making love because they were able to kind of come together. So on one hand, it can be very positive for turning up the heat in romance and dating. So those of you guys who are looking to get out there and meet somebody, likely you may find that you have more opportunities, especially with the squares from Jupiter. However, Venus's ingress is rather intense. Um, she immediately is met by an opposition to Pluto. Um, this happens once a year. You guys want to think back to when this uh, Venus conjunction was seated. We had Venus in conjunction to Pluto uh, back when it was in, you know, Capricorn before it went into Aquarius. 
Um, so now here we are down the road and now we're facing the opposition. Some heavy stuff co goes on, you know, life-wise. When, when uh, Venus, the god of, you know, love and relationships and style and harmony is challenged by Pluto, it is like this moment where uh, Venus is quite single-handedly realizing that something is about to be abducted or taken into the underworld. So this is happening right before the retrograde. The whole theme of Venus retrograde is like kind of connected to Persephone and where she was, you know, taken from Demeter, taken to the underworld, held captive to be the dark queen, force-fed pomegranate seeds. The other gods brokered a deal to bring her back because everything was dying um, as a result of, uh, you know, Demeter's depression because she lost her daughter. Anyway. Um, there's seasons to relationships, there's seasons to our financial lives, there's seasons to our professional lives. Um, and I think that the Venus retrograde is really showing us that there is like a season going on where everybody really needs to get more so in touch with the heart space. The positive is that with Venus and Mars moving together, we're going to see lots of opportunity for creativity, lots of opportunity for feeling inspired. Um, but also drama. There, there is going to be drama. Just having Mars in this sign, it's already kind of starting up. And we will see hard aspects all month long for both Mars and Venus. So hard aspects are 90 degree angles. This is when we have friction. If you guys look back what's happened the last few weeks, having Mars square the nodes, then we're going to see um, also Mars square Uranus this month. And we're going to see Venus square the nodes, square Jupiter, square Uranus. Very unusual astrology. Um, and then the oppositions to Pluto. So likely some uncovering of some deep dark secrets or things that have been kind of hidden in the shadows are now being revealed, kicking up a bunch of dust and it's really making people reevaluate where they stand when it comes to relationships, their relationships with lovers. Leo does rule, you know, younger people, boyfriends, girlfriends, kind of, um, you know, people that, that we connect with, that we fall in love with. So. Um, there's definitely going to be lots of shifts in relationships and finances finances this month. It would be enough for me to say that just looking at Venus coming into um, a square with the nodes. But the other aspects tell me that it's going to be uh, a bit of a wild ride. And with retrogrades, when planets retrograde back, they'll make aspects several times. So something I'll talk to you guys about on Thursday is that the reason why this is so challenging, or one of the reasons why it's so challenging, is that we're going to see um, expanded situations because of the squares to Jupiter, chaotic situations because of the squares to Uranus where there's unexpected kind of twists of fate when it comes to what we need in relationships, how we want to relate to other, what others, what we want sexually, how we're going to express ourselves, where our money is coming from, how we feel about making it, and then we're going to see it retrograde and Venus will make these aspects several times. So this will be a theme playing out for the next couple months. I will go on a on an outer limb here and just say that I think a lot of people are going to realize that they have to get right with what it is they truly love and need in relationships. And I think that it's also going to be about um, relationships really being tested as a result of some financial challenges. And you start to kind of really ask yourself, you know, um, do I want to be in a relationship? You know, do I need to be finding uh, or putting more effort into finding someone to build a life with? Do I want to get back out there and meet people? Um, you know, what does my heart tell me that it really needs? You know, how, how willing am I to um, try to find love? Am I working hard enough in my pre-existing relationship? Do I like the direction that things are going in? Do I need more romance or connection? So this is going to be an, an ongoing thing. It doesn't really matter where you are on the spectrum. Um, it can give lots of opportunities for pops of self-expression and creativity and feeling very inspired. So I don't want to harp too much on the negative because Venus is a positive planet. You know, having her in the sign for four months is definitely going to give everybody an opportunity to learn how to play and how to create and how to feel more free. Um, so watch for that ingress. The opposition to Pluto, unfortunately, does come with some darker things. We do see women in positions where there can be challenges revolving around um, feeling threatened or um, attacked. We do see, you know, sometimes some pretty significant stories of somebody being abducted or I don't even want to put energy into it, but it, it happens, okay? It definitely happens. So if, if you're somebody who um, is out and about and, you know, you know, around other people, be very careful, um, especially because Leo can be about, you know, events and bars and and clubs and places that you can go where you can kind of socialize. And, and I think a lot of people through the retrograde are going to start to kind of question or reevaluate who their real friends are. 
because of the opposition to Pluto naturally. So if you're hanging out with people that you're not used to hanging out with, or if you're uh, taking financial advice from people who you're not taking used to taking financial advice from because of the squares to the nodes, there's something that's just not quite resonating. So be mindful of, of you know, who, you're, who you're engaging with, okay? On the ninth of the month, we're gonna see Mercury in Taurus uh, come into a sextile with Neptune. Not a major aspect, but definitely a day where I feel like we're picking up some energy um, you know, to really tap into our intuition. And that's gonna continue for about a day or two as the moon is coming into connection with Neptune and picking up that sextile. Great working day, especially if you're a creative artist or if you're visual or you work with paint or film. Um, a way to be able to take the visions, take what you're kind of meditating and trying to manifest and bringing it into reality. Um, so I, I really like that particular aspect that'll be playing out right around the ninth. Great for divination, tapping in, you know, and uh, being able to really make sense of our intuition and our dreams. Um, we may feel that we download something spiritually or we get some kind of vision for something that gives us the directions to be able to uh, kind of physically build something. So intuition is going to be kind of strong there on the 9th. Now on the 11th of the month, we're gonna see Pluto return back to 29 degrees of Capricorn, okay? This is some heavy stuff, guys. Uh, think back to when we had Pluto at 29 degrees just a month or two ago. It felt like nails on a, on a chalkboard, at least for me personally. Um, Pluto's retrograde back into Capricorn is gonna bring up more Capricorn things. Transformation, uh, breakdown, especially in regards to uh, big business, um, anything in regards to government, things in regards to superiors, people who are in charge. Capricorn can be like police force. It can also be people who wear uniforms, uh, generals, um, older people in society as well because Capricorn represents elders. Um, this is where you're gonna feel the heat turn up. Um, I'll talk about this more probably in the next month, but the North and the South node in July are getting ready to hit the 29 degrees of the cardinal signs. And we're gonna see the perfected Pluto square the nodes all at 29 degrees of the cardinal signs. So I'm sure those of you guys who are late degree cardinal signs, you know, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, you guys are like, no, it's almost done. Pluto is gonna go in and out of Capricorn uh, this year and into next year. Next year, it's gonna spend a lot more time in Aquarius, but um, what does this tell us, right? Pluto's retrograde back into 29 degrees where it is talking about secret meetings. Remember I said the Sabian symbol, people meeting in secret, making decisions and forming alliances. Um, I'm gonna keep shouting this from rooftops, but I really want you guys to go and learn about what's going on with this um, World Health uh, Organization that's talking about the pandemic treaty. It's really important that you educate yourself regardless of where you live and find out what is being discussed in this treaty. Um, it is international, basically trying to get certain countries to sign uh, over their rights and their freedoms, their constitutional freedoms, um, and basically giving way to the WHO to be able to allow them to interfere and determine whether or not uh, in the future we are having um, a pandemic. Um, there's a mul multiple definitions for that. They will be able to essentially make decisions that will override anything in regards to um, your country's decisions in regards to health mandates, uh, lockdowns, the list goes on. So I know this sounds crazy, um, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about that Saturn-Neptune connection that's coming. And um, I wonder if this is the setup for just more organized takeover and control. Um, call me crazy, but I, I have this feeling that, you know, like at least here in the country that I live in, I can only talk about the United States because that's where I live, um, but it feels as if like the, the country has been kind of taken hostage by big business. Um, and so regardless of what you believe in or what, what, what you have seen, um, it's going to be interesting to see Pluto go back to 29 degrees because as the nodes square, it's going to be forcing over the next six to eight weeks some of this stuff to really kind of come out into the world and we're gonna to start to kind of see what's been happening um, behind the scenes, right? Now, Pluto will uh, return back to Aquarius at the beginning of 2024. I do plan on doing a video in this next week where I'm gonna to touch on this very specifically and go in depth, but look at where Capricorn is in your chart. Uh, Pluto is saying, hey, it's time to do some digging here. We need to reevaluate something, something needs to change and it's gonna feel rather intense. That's gonna be an area of focus um, over the next couple of weeks. 
very significant if you have anything 27 to 29 degrees of the fixed sign of, of the cardinal signs the early degrees of the fixed signs are still feeling the heat though because you guys are kind of are, are kind of close um same day we're also going to see venus in leo square jupiter and so that kind of makes me feel like an overindulgence day overspending over loving over affection a lot of sugar a lot of shopping uh, but a lot of drama because you know venus is in is is in the sign that is very dramatic but it's kind of sexy because these are at five degrees so it can be an opportunity for heart opening feeling inspired being creative um, i like that energy especially because we're picking up the trine to the moon in aries so in spite of that pluto retrograde uh, the question is is what are you going to do about it right what are you going to do about this this need to totally change and rework something Collectively, Pluto in Capricorn is showing all of us where like this capitalist type system is not really serving everybody equally, right? And I think that's the long and short of it. At least that's my takeaway. Um, and I think it's this need to totally reevaluate the way that we look at work, what, what we're willing to sacrifice for work. Um, and it's definitely over the last several years, especially since the pandemic, had a lot of people changing careers, changing direction. As hard as it's been, I've heard a lot of amazing stories about people who have like found their passion, published their book, launched their business. And I think that crisis is pushing a lot of people to really look around and go, we need to have a change in the way that we look at productivity. We need to have a change in the way that we look at those who are actually serving um, us because you know Capricorn is gonna be about civil servants. Um, and whether or not it's a good idea to be having some of these people who have been sitting in you know, Congress or Senate for so, so, so many years um, who are getting older, Pluto and Capricorn represents where there can be corruption of older individuals or big business. Um, and if it's serving us, right? If, if the country is essentially in so many ways um, just, just become, become a business in itself, many of you guys will argue that that's always been the case, but let's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep my politics out of it. Um, same day, we're also going to see Mercury come into Gemini. So great, great energy. <laughs> Mercury is still picking up that trying to Pluto, uh, but Mercury is at home. So there's still room for powerful communications and ideas and sharing. But now things get a little bit busier. Um, and if you happen to be a Mercury ruled chart, so if you're a Gemini or a Virgo rising, you're probably going to feel that shift to have the sun and the moon excuse me, the sun and Mercury in Gemini is just a very chatty, chatty period. Obviously, we know also that as we have planets go through the mutable signs, now that Saturn is in Pisces, uh, we're going to start picking up some squares. So get ready for, you know, sun square Neptune, get ready for Mercury square Saturn. Um, we are going to be feeling, you know, also in Virgo season and Sag season, some of those similar squares. And the squares and the mutable signs are easier to, to navigate, although there can be some issues with honesty, communication, clarity, difference of belief uh, systems and ideas that can really happen when we have squares in the mutable signs. Uh, we get to the 15th of the month. And we're going to be seeing that we have Mercury in Gemini square Saturn. So you guys remember this last week, the sun square Saturn feeling kind of like the slowdown, the heaviness, sometimes the challenges, we're feeling a little discouraged. That's really normal when the sun and Saturn square. Um, but now we have Mercury, the mind, okay, in its ruling sign, squaring Saturn in Pisces. And that is like the detriment um, or the debilitation of Mercury, right? So to me, it's kind of saying, is the spirit and the rational mind in alignment? Is there a challenge here revolving around uh, communication and beliefs, uh, what we say and what we actually believe in, uh, the actions that we're taking in our kind of, you know, busy everyday lives of Mercury in the third or Mercury in Gemini is how we're writing, what we're texting, what we're saying, what we're reading, uh, you know, what, what we're telling people that we're doing versus what we're actually doing behind the scenes. And so probably one of the biggest things that I've seen with mutable squares just since Saturn went into Pisces is that there's a lot of people that are saying that they're doing one thing and they're doing another. And uh, this is going to be something you guys want to watch for, for kind of getting stuck up in the traps with Mercury score Saturn of, you know, being held accountable for things that you said that um, you were going to do, but you didn't, or um, for things that you claim that you weren't doing, but you were. And it's at a seven, so it is definitely going to be about uh, relationships and it's relational. And it can be a day where we can get some harsh criticism. 
Um, but at the same time, I definitely think that it's also still picking up the energy because Mercury is the dispositor of the sun of this upcoming sun square Neptune. Okay, so when the sun squares Neptune, there's also like the softening and not seeing things clearly. So we're going to have a sun Neptune square setting up right when we have a Mercury uh, Neptune square. I don't want to completely let the cat out of the bag in terms of what my, um, my Venus retrograde webinar is going to be about. But there's going to be several really interesting fixed stars um, and asteroids that are involved in this Venus retrograde. Uh, both Lilith and Juno are going to be very much entangled in the Venus retrograde. And we know that Lilith is the other woman. It's what we lust after. Um, and it's more raw, kind of sexual, and it's passionate. And it can also be about primal feminine energy and um, expressing yourself sexually and owning it. And then we're going to have Juno, which is going to be about marriage. And, you know, Juno was married to Jupiter and she was more conservative and she stayed with him, even though he was a bit of a philanderer. Um, so I'm looking at the Sun Juno conjunction in Gemini coming into a square with Neptune and really what that's saying is that we're going to see a lot of issues with infidelity in relationships. We're going to see a lot of issues with dishonesty in relationships. Um, I do think that there is going to be a sense of like showing people what we want them to see, but whether or not that that's really in alignment with our actions and our passion and our desire. At the same time, um, you know, Neptune is in a square also with Juno. So there's like a storyline that's pre presenting itself. That's like the concept and the idea of commitment in relationships or domestic union or, or marriage and uh, what we build it up to be or what we're telling our partners or if there is like a, another path that's coming in for another potential partner or for another potential person. So, so much of the dance of the Venus retrograde is you're going to see Lilith and Juno and Venus all kind of coming together. And there's going to be a lot of drama. We're going to hear a lot of things about problems in relationships, people leaving people for other people, people leaving people because of, you know, the wrongdoings in relationships. And it's like, there's going to be tea all summer long. So some of it's actually starting from some of the things that are being seated this month. Um, so watch for that. Mercury, Mercury coming into the square of Saturn is really talking more so about the sun and uh, Juno square Neptune. So I think we're going to see lots of changes in partnerships and people kind of feeling like they're possibly not getting what they need or that communication is not as clear as it could or it should be. Okay, so then we go to the 17th of the month. We're going to see Saturn turn retrograde in Pisces. Um, so we've got Saturn going retrograde. Saturn will begin its retrograde. Um, and I believe I've got a video that I'm going to talk to you guys about the Saturn Jupiter sextile. So I'll talk to you more about that later in the month. Um, but it's going to go retrograde from seven all the way back to zero degrees. So if you have any placements, um, eight through zero degrees of Pisces, or if you have your Saturn there, you're going to have your Saturn return. You'll have several um, or if you have any personal planets, Saturn's going to be retrograding back over that. So when Saturn retrogrades, we want to make sure that we're maintaining our form, our commitment. Oftentimes Saturn, you know, being a planet that's about hard work and commitment and karma and like really meeting these deadlines. When it goes retrograde, we can have a tendency to kind of slack off a little bit, or we can also feel the pressure kind of releases. Um, it's going to retrograde at a seven. So once again, it's picking up the energy of relationships and partners and give and take. And when I say relationships, it's not just romantic. It can be relationships you have with your therapist and relationships you have with your family, relationships you have with, you know, um, with other people, friends. Seven in Pisces makes me feel like it's going to be us reevaluating, you know, um, what we're getting or not getting from other people. Um, some of us might be reevaluating making changes with the church that we go to or the astrologer that we listen to or uh, the therapist that's helping us. Um, and it's hard to have Saturn in Pisces because Pisces doesn't have structure, right? It just kind of it's it's water. It's going to it's going to slide right through your fingers. So there can be a sense when Saturn goes retrograde where we start to kind of realize like, whoa, I'm getting hit with all this stuff because I haven't been doing my Saturn work. Uh, don't sleep on it. I really feel like a lot of the Saturn squares and a lot of the Neptune squares are really going to be highlighting where there's problems in the Pisces area of your chart as a result of not thinking clearly, seeing things clearly, or putting in enough effort. But on the flip side, if the retrograde happens and you're like, I'm good, generally you're doing that work, right? So you're going to be able to kind of gauge what's going on there. 
Saturn retrogrades definitely are going to be affecting uh, Capricorn and Aquarius risings because those are your chart rulers. Equally, uh, Pisces rising, you're going to feel this as well. Um, even with the retrograde, you're still picking up a sextile from Saturn, excuse me, from Jupiter. So I do feel like to an extent, uh, even Jupiter being conjunct the North Node is still really positive for Saturn. So there's, there's something growing or expanding or there's something you're learning about in the Jupiter area of your chart where Taurus is that's helping support Saturn go retrograde and like showing him, okay, this is how to be positive and optimistic about the changes that you're making spiritually, energetically, and emotionally. For me, I think it's just been, uh, it's been really weird because it, it's really shown me where the biggest issues are with the things that you don't see. It's like how things affect you energetically, what you're watching on TV, uh, you know, vibes, people that you're around. Um, and so all of the invisible things that we don't really think about that actually do affect us. So the Saturn retrograde is going to allow us to be able to reevaluate that. Um, then on the 18th, we're going to pick up the energy from the sun square Neptune, and that's going to be happening at 27 degrees, and it'll be right around the time of that new moon. Uh, we will be having a um, new moon in Gemini on the 17th. That'll be at 26 degrees. Um, then we get to the 19th, and this is when Jupiter is officially in a sextile with Saturn. So like I said, whatever is being reworked is getting some kind of encouragement or growth from Jupiter and the North Node um, in Taurus. Sextiles are lazy energy, right? They're like a Venus energy. So you have to actually do some work. You have to be willing to reevaluate the Pisces area to reap the benefits in the Taurus area. Um, so I talk a lot about this actually in my horoscopes. I talk about the sextile and how it's going to affect everybody, but you really need to do your Saturn reevaluation to get the goodies I think of the Jupiter North Node in Taurus. You'll see that intermittently throughout the year, the, the Jupiter Saturn sextile. And, you know, Saturn says if you're committed and if you're willing to do the work, then there can be growth and there can be steady growth and it can be positive. We'll see, especially going into next year, some similar aspects between, you know, Saturn and uh, Uranus as well. So it'll be nice to see Saturn finally working with us, kind of helping some of the growth in the Taurus area of our life. Um, as a reminder, also, the same day on the 19th, Venus is going to enter shadow, okay? So Venus will retrograde back to 12 degrees of Leo. So this is where you're going to start seeing the rumbles. Uh, why do retrograde shadows affect us, right? I mean, especially with planets that are closer to Earth, like Mars and Venus and, and, and you know, Mercury. When a planet goes retrograde, it essentially is going to be kind of going, like I said, to the underworld and coming back. So it's harder to reap the positive benefits of those particular aspects of that planet. So where Venus wants harmony and love and sweet things and financial, you know, security, and in Leo it wants drama and romance and dates and going out and having a good time and like really being able to like participate in, in uh, relationships or creativity, um, she's going to start showing you where she's having some issues. And, um, you know, sometimes retrogrades kick things up just as much, if not more, in the pre or the post shadow than it does during the retrograde in itself. And so this is why I told you guys, pay attention to the squares to Jupiter and pay attention to the squares to Uranus, because these will be the first squares before she retrogrades. And you're going to see some of the same, let's say, upsets possibly happen the same, you know, twists of fate, changes in relationships, um, things of that nature. This also means that when she enters shadow, just because she's not retrograde doesn't mean she won't affect you. So getting back with your ex, making changes to your style, um, you know, making big financial shifts, buying expensive things, stuff like that may still kind of have a reversal when Venus goes retrograde because it's happening within the shadow, right? And Venus retrogrades every 18 months. So you guys can go back to the last uh, Venus retrograde that, that we had. I believe that was in uh, Capricorn. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say I don't know which one's worse, but the, the Venus retrograde in, in Capricorn was a gnarly one because of its connection to Pluto. Um, that was at the end of 2021, the beginning of 2022. Um, so, you know, conjunction to Pluto, an ending and a rebirth, an opportunity to change and transform things. Very painful, though or, you know, Venus square uh, Uranus in conjunction with Mars. Oof, I don't know. Uh, that's between a rock and a hard place, honestly. <laughs> 
Um, but that's when you're gonna start to see the effects of the venous retrograde. So for those of you guys who are gonna go, can I get cosmetic surgery? Can I get Botox? Can I do this? I'm never gonna tell people what they can or cannot do. I'm just gonna let you guys know that if you're making these decisions from this moment on, um, then you may decide to segue or change directions or you might decide you don't like it. So Venus in, in Leo in particular has me thinking like it's gonna be about um, trends in, in fashion and things that other celebrities are selling or pushing. That could be clothing, that could be art. That is like, oh, all the rave and then people are buying it and then it becomes worthless or it's no longer a trend, but you've spent a lot of money on it. Um, it also makes me feel like it could be things that are really dramatic and theatrical and things that involve art. So I think of like tattoos, especially with Uranus and Taurus, that people get some really affordable tattoos that are bad tattoos. <laughs> Uh, especially with some of the oppositions we're going to see to Saturn. Um, also, I think it's it's going to be about hair because Leo is the main. So I could see some really wild, crazy, I think, uh, hairstyles that people are going to be, um, you know, doing. We might see some trends, especially with, within like celebrities that are, you know, trend setting new, uh, loud, bright, unusual, um, you know, mains that people try to go, okay, I'm going to take this picture to my hairdresser. Can you do this? And then suddenly you've got Cookie Monster. So, you know, just be careful, be, be mindful of that stuff, especially if you have like a, if you're a Libra based, a Libra or a Taurus based chart, or if you have a, um, a uh, Leo rising or a natal Venus um, in Leo, that, that might apply more so to you than to most people. Um, so that's when we're gonna start feeling the shadow. Then on the 21st here in the Northern hemisphere, we are going to be having summer solstice. Uh, we're going to have the sun move into the sign of cancer. So this is the uh, official start of summer. Um, although, you know, other places in the world, you guys are enjoying enjoying your holidays or your cooler weather. Um, but this is going to be the solstice. So this is essentially um, the, the, the restart like point, right? So it's the beginning of the season. So it's kind of clearing of the decks. Sun moving into Cancer for the, sev the next several weeks is gonna highlight the need to focus more on emotions, home, domestic, family, what we're nurturing, what we're caring. Um, so that is going to be especially important um, for those of you guys who are Cancers, you're coming into your birthday season. Those of you guys who had your birthday earlier in June who are Geminis, happy birthday to you guys as well. Um, and we're not really seeing any aspects off the bat. You know, eventually we're going to see some, you know, trines to the south node and some trines to Saturn, which will be really helpful, um, especially because all this damn energy in um, Leo is ruled by the sun. So, um, you know, watching all of these conjunctions and these squares happen, it's all feeding off of the energy of the sun. And so for a lot of people, it's going to be changes that are going on on the home front things that are developing domestically or in your private life or with property or real estate or parents um, as a result of changes of matters of the heart or changes with children or changes becoming self-employed or being more creative. And so I can see a lot of people renovating homes, you know, painting their kids' rooms, you know, teaching their kid from home now and wanting to do more creative projects and like, you know, home summer camps and lots of fun, creative things that people can do at home with their families. So we will benefit from that sun, you know, trying Saturn, sun trying Neptune throughout some of these transits. So it'll kind of, it's gonna help lessen the blow, I guess I should say, of, of some of the more turbulent energies, especially when Mars and Venus start squaring Uranus. Same day, we're gonna see Mercury and Gemini sextile Mars and Leo. Um, so that's a very get up and go, excited, communicating, sharing type of day. I think it could be really fun for people to be getting out of town, traveling, going places. Um, I'm actually kind of liking that for uh, that particular sextile. Then on the 25th of the month, we're gonna see the square taking place. And this is going to be between Mercury and Gemini and Neptune and Pisces. This is the day that you want to watch out for scams, telephone scams, email scams, uh, you know, things that people are telling you that may not be true. I definitely think this is going to be the case because we've got a moon that's going to be in Virgo picking up this energy. So those of you guys who have uh, mutable placements, uh, Gemini, Virgo, Sag, you know, Pisces, let's say the last uh, 27, 28, 29 degrees, be mindful here that this is a day where there can be some weird stuff kind of going on, some distortion, something kind of being twisted, not hearing something appropriately uh, or correctly. Um, and definitely some weird weather, I think with the, the 
you know, Sun trine Saturn and the Mercury square Neptune. We're probably going to see some pretty significant storms that are brewing. Mars in Leo generally does bring higher temperatures, fires, things like that. And Mars square Uranus the very same day uh, makes me wonder if we're going to hear something significant about a storm or a fire or where air is like fueling, you know, like a, like a fire, obviously touch wood. But Mars square Uranus is not something you want to mess with. Um, that will be perfecting more so the end of the 25th going into the 26th, but still uh, we're kind of splitting hairs here. Um, that Mars Uranus square, right? Mars action, passion, desire, cutting, heat. In Leo, ego, proud, loud, right? Dramatic, squaring Uranus. People are going to do some really wild and crazy things for love. <laughs> Uh, uh, and because of love, people are going to do some really wild and crazy things also when it comes to investments because the fifth house Leo is speculative market. So we're going to see some wild things going on with money coming in, money going out. Be very careful if that's something that you're participating in. Um, I think to some extent also, you know, the summer, you know, I, I joke, jokingly refer to this as, uh, you know, the, the cruel summer. Um, in many ways it is. When we see Venus retrogrades, we see relationships that have been on the fritz finally come undone. Um, but I really think that this is going to be a time where a lot of people are going to be making decisions that are going to be more heart-based, right? Or they're going to feel challenged to make decisions that are going to be heart-based uh, because everybody's going to be looking at these squares to Taurus going like, well, but I got to pay the bills, but, you know, financially we're so entangled or, you know, I can't quit this job. I'm supporting, you know, my family or, you know, I, I need to take care of myself. And like, listen, I'm not one of those woo, -woo astrologers. Like we live in the third dimension. Um, but I do feel like a lot of us are going to be finally um, facing, you know, where we've made sacrifices when it comes to our love life, when it comes to our creative selves, when it comes to our children for money, for resources, staying at the job you hate because you have to pay the bills, staying in the relationship because, you know, they financially provide and they take care of you. And I think a lot of people are going to realize that we're reaching this breaking point where there are some things that money cannot buy. Um, and that's the long and short of it, right? That's going to be, I think, probably the big takeaway um, from some of these squares. But this can be, with Mars and Lilith coming together, square Uranus, some questionable uh, things that are going on in love life and uh, people possibly willing to do some questionable things for money <laughs> um, and, you know, paying people people off as well. So I'll just leave it at that, but let's let's see how that plays out. You have any planets 20 to 22 degrees of the fixed signs? Um, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, watch out. The 26th is lit. And you're going to see it a couple days later with Venus coming into that square. Uh, then we're going to have on the 28th, the Sun in Cancer is going to trine Saturn at a 7. There we go. So we're going to have a nice trine from the moon as well. So I've noticed a pattern here. Like when there's like trines going on between Saturn and like also Neptune, the moon seems to be like in a water sign, which I'm kind of digging a lot. Uh, psychic day on tap, emotional, the ability to release and let go with the south node moon. But the sun and Mercury trine Saturn is having conversations that are about how you're feeling, making decisions um, and kind of tapping into your intuition. Shortly after this, we're going to see um, a Kazemi that's setting up in Cancer as well. And then on the 29th, we're going to see Mercury and Cancer trying Saturn. So it's picking up the same energy at a seven. Heartfelt connections, you know, conversations, communication, sacrifices that we're making on an emotional or on a domestic level. And then we're going to see on the 30th, uh, that's when we are going to have the Kazemi. So you're going to see Mercury pull ahead of the sun. It looks like it's going to happen at 9 degrees. you have any personal planets? 8, 9, 10 degrees of Cancer. Pay attention. Um, really psychic day on tap. Just the sun, Mercury in general. You know, usually when it's conjunct, the mind is kind of on fire. And I think it can be highly emotional. But this particular period is where a lot of people are going to have psychic downloads and really, I feel like people are realizing like they have to acknowledge their emotions. You have to pay attention to what your body is telling you. It's hitting a nine and it's going to sextile Jupiter. Um, so watch for that Kazemi day, intuitive download, feeling really inspired to write something. You get a significant, you know, message, uh, some kind of conversation, some kind of communication. 
happening while the moon is in Sag, square Saturn. So the news that comes may not be easy, but I think it's necessary. It's something that needs to be heard. And then you guys are going to see this more going into, um, obviously, like it's, it's going to be the beginning of July, but you're going to see Venus hit that square to Uranus. I feel as soon as Mars squares Uranus, it's like on like Donkey Kong. You guys are going to start feeling it. Also on the 30th of the month, we're going to see um, Neptune go retrograde um, and Venus square Uranus. Man, that's all setting up the end of June, beginning of July, but you guys are going to feel it. That's why I'm, I'm throwing it into this. Interesting to have both Neptune and Saturn go retrograde in Pisces. So go look at Capricorn in your chart. Pluto's back. He's, he's here like a wrecking ball trying to dig stuff up. Go and look at Pisces in your chart. Saturn going retrograde is saying, hey, time to reevaluate. Are we really having as good of boundaries? Are we really as committed? Or do we really believe as much as we say we do? What actions are you taking to be able to be more in touch with your spiritual responsibilities? Uh, where are you shying away from things? Where are you not being clear? And then the Neptune retrograde, honestly, I think it could be more challenging because, you know, usually when Neptune is direct, it's like everything is like in la la land. We don't always see everything. But when it goes retrograde, it's like we get hit with a harsh dose of reality. With the Pluto retrograde, going back into Capricorn, I think we're also going to start to see the effects where major power takeovers or major power plays in our own lives are significantly affecting our ability to feel productive. Um, and so the positive is that when we see some of these critical moments, 29 degrees, late degrees of Pisces, retrogrades, we have the ability to create change. So I want you guys to be reminding yourself this all month long. You have the ability to create change. It's just going to be a matter of, do you want to kind of confront some of the things that you may already know on a heart level, right? It's just a matter of, okay, do I really want to go through the drama of working all of this out? But in, in my opinion, um, if something's a problem, make it bigger. Uh, that's the month. This is the month to do it. Something's a problem, make it bigger. Do it so that way you can use the retrograde and then also the returning squares that we're going to see over the next two months to rebuild, rework, and redevelop, I think, a healthier sense of self-esteem, healthier finances, feel more so grounded, um, and be kind of reaching for the things that we, we really know that we need um, in our lives this month. I know I didn't touch on it, but we do have that full moon in Sagittarius um, that's going to be taking place on June 3rd. There's already a video out on my channel about that, so check that out if you guys want to watch it. And uh, that June 17th new moon in Gemini as well. Um, I'll be doing separate videos that are going to be on a lot of these aspects, so catch me on Thursday. I'm going to be talking to you guys about Venus moving into Leo, my thoughts on that, um, and how to kind of be prepared with some of the things that are coming. Um, I will be back here on Sunday doing another astro weather as well. I unfortunately will not be uh, available to be doing my live readings on Friday. So if you usually join me for Friday, I will not be here. Um, I will be back next week. So I'll post the link next week for um, live astrology readings. Let me know how are you guys doing with this energy? How are you feeling with some of these aspects? What are you looking forward to? Um, it's always cool to see your guys' comments and come back later in the month and see how some of this stuff played out. Um, so don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I appreciate your guys' support. It helps keep this whole thing going and growing. And I am getting closer and closer to my goal of 20,000 subscribers. So if you have not already subscribed, please do click the button below so you're alerted as to when I have content coming out on the channel. Uh, I hope it's a good June for you guys. And I will see all of you guys back here on Thursday. Take care.